Hi, welcome back to Mike's Attic, and today we're going to discuss one of my favourite guilty pleasure movies, Saturn 3. Oh my god, this is hilarious. Let's talk about the personnel first of all. This film was directed by Stanley Donan. At the end of his career, this really famous director of musicals, the guy behind Singing in the Rain, often voted as one of the best films ever made, he was in England and he made a sci-fi movie. And one of the script writers on this film was Martin Amis, who had gone to become one of the most serious and important novelists in British literature in the 80s and 90s. If you see the script, you'll wonder why. I mean, God, it's, the script is terrible. But Martin Amis worked on it. Then we've got the actors. The film is a kind of... It's a kind of Adam and Eve allegory. So on this moon of Saturn, it's this fantastic base. And the set for this base was one of the biggest sets of its kind. I think the biggest set of its kind ever built in the British studios up to that point. Right? So, and on this uh, base, there is an older man and a younger woman. And they've got this idyllic lifestyle. Right? The older man is Kirk Douglas. Rather hilariously showing off his physique all the time. <laughs> Apparently, his ego became a bit of a problem during the making of the film. And the young woman he's with is Farrah Fawcett, who was, of course, a big deal at the time from Charlie's Angels. She was one of the hotties of the era. So her and Kirk Douglas are sort of paired up somehow on this, you know, and having this idyllic relationship. And Farrah Fawcett spends most of the movie in various states of undress and rather ridiculous costumes. One of my favourites being... They go for a little jog round this base they've got. And Farrah Fawcett, she's wearing little sort of white shorts. And then she's got this white blouse, which is unbuttoned up to here. So it's, it's buttoned from about here, so it keeps flapping. So it's kind of like Alan Partridge, you know, like, what's that? Oh, you just missed it. Bye. You know, you know she's kind of always about to reveal something, never quite does. She spends the whole film in these kind of ridiculous costumes. And we have to believe that her and Kirk Douglas are in this wonderful little world, in this moon base beside Saturn. And then a, a young man comes, that's right, and invades their little paradise, you know, like Satan, right? And, it, and so the movie becomes one of those classic movies, two men and one woman. You know, the nice couple, they're having a nice time. Suddenly, a mysterious young man turns up and there's an erotic frisson. Will he get off with the young woman or what's going to happen? The best example of this type of movie is, of course, Roman Polanski's first feature film, Knife in the Water. That is the absolute, you know, industry standard of this kind of movie. Now, the problem with that in this case is the supposed sexy young man is Harvey Keitel, who from the very beginning is extremely cold and ruthless and almost sort of reptilian. So there's no, the, the erotic frisson that you kind of want isn't really there, right? And it's because he's come from an earth that has become very mechanised and in, industrialised and everyone's very cold and sex is purely treated as recreation. There's no feeling in it. And uh, we know also from the very beginning that Keitel has actually murdered someone, uh, his captain, to get on board this moon base. And rather oddly, Keitel, Stanley Donan decided to dub his voiceover with Roy Dotrice because he thought that Keitel's Brooklyn accent didn't really work with the storyline. So why employ him? Very odd. Anyway, Keitel brings with him this robot. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a crazed robot story. So basically, it's a brand new style of robot, which it gets its programming directly from its programmer's mind. So, of course, it picks up his emotions and his prejudices. And because Harvey Keitel is fixated on Farrah Fawcett, so the robot becomes fixated on Farrah Fawcett. And eventually the robot goes crazy and wants to kill everybody. So it's that kind of movie. And there's two things about this movie why I like it, why it fascinates me. The first is the ending. Now, what happens at the end? Um, the, the, the two men get killed, the robot gets destroyed, and Farrah Fawcett survives. And she has to go back 
to earth, right? So she's like Eve, leading the, leaving the Garden of Eden and going into the world. And you see this shot at the end of the spaceship going back to a blackened, darkened earth and this kind of oppressive music. I have to be honest, when I first saw the film, that ending had a really deep impression on me. It really got to me. Sometimes, you know, with trashy movies, there's one or two scenes and one or two ideas that get to you. And perhaps because the rest of the movie is not so good, those ideas come forward in a way that they wouldn't so much in a better, more respectable film where everything's working. And that ending suddenly just leapt out at me when I first saw it, and it stayed with me. It was a very powerful image. This tiny spacecraft going towards a dark, shadowy Earth, you know, leaving this nice paradise with Kirk Douglas, um, and going into this horrible world of sin and depravity and decadence and corruption. The second reason I like the movie is the robot. Now, the robot is the strangest piece of design in movies. It's so weird. They've based it on a kind of colossus, like a Greek colossus. And that kind of, you know, that kind of sort of um, armour that the Norsemen had that almost looks like muscles. Like if you, you know those body works exhibitions where they've stripped away the flesh and you've just got the, mu the muscles and the veins. That's what it looks like. But then, bizarrely, at the top of it, instead of a head, all there is is this little arm with a tiny couple of two LED lights for eyes. So it's got this massive body and this crappy little head. <laughs> it's so weird. And for some reason, it works. I don't know why, it just works. You, you, you believe in this robot as this kind of sinister, mean-spirited, sadistic thing, simply because of this weird thing of this colossal body and this tiny little head with these little eyes. And it, it's just peculiar, it sort of works. And it's kind of amusing to me, watching how Stanley Donan is, and his cinematographer try to make this work. So there's a wonderful scene where, you know, the, the robot <laughs> is creeping up on Farrah Fawcett in this kind of garden area they have through the plants. And it's kind of amusing how Donan keeps trying to use various methods, either sort of stealthy camera or close-up, to try and make this really odd-looking robot have any kind of power or emotion. <laughs> it's very strange. But for all these reasons, because of its titillation over Farrah Fawcett, this bizarre robot, this very weird, doom-laden ending, I find the movie completely fascinating. It's terrible, but it's kind of fascinating. And I wonder if any of you out there have watched it with the same amusement and interest as I have. I, I'm kind of fond of this movie. I'm actually in the process of buying the Blu-ray. <laughs> I like it so much. And the whole production history of it is absolutely fascinating. It really is. So uh, do check it out. Okay, next time on Mike's Attic, I will be discussing John Carpenter's The Fog.